Anyways, let's carry on here. This is what we're going to talk about today because with the halving, it, it was a big halving. And the reason for that is because if you actually look at the inflation, this is kind of what triggered this morning's discussion, which is comparing Bitcoin to gold. And I was going to compare it to, I was going to put the title to be gold versus Bitcoin, which is better, but it's not even, it's not even a comparison anymore. Kind of the last thing that had to happen here was that uh, Bitcoin has now a lower inflation rate than gold. So with gold on average, 2%, I think is the inflation rate on average. And officially after this having this epoch, we're less than that. So Bitcoin officially has a lower inflation rate than gold now. And if you know anything about Bitcoin and you know the halving cycle, it's only going to go down and down and down. But we've officially crossed that. Officially. So that's one of them. I'm going to go through actually eight more of them today. And we're just going to talk things through here. Because once you hear these, I think, and, and probably some people will be familiar with these. But once you hear these and consider where we are right now. Bitcoin is about a, a trillion dollar market cap. Gold's 12. So if we have no doubt in our mind that Bitcoin is a better asset than gold, eventually people will figure that out and Bitcoin will overtake gold market cap, 12 trillion. Think about that would do think about what that does for the price. Think about what that does for the scarcity. Think about what that does for every aspect of Bitcoin. If it passes gold officially market cap wise, that's a big deal. But we're not going to stop at gold. This is just going to be the next milestone for Bitcoin. So let's talk about these. I have eight things. I'm going to zip through them pretty fast. But I think it's very important because when we're having conversations with friends, family, coworkers, we have to be loaded with this type of information to have a good discussion with people. So the first one is how much gold is actually out there. So we know with Bitcoin that at any given moment, any given second of the day, we can find out exactly how much Bitcoin is circulating. With gold, we have no idea. We know how much has been mined. We don't know how much has been destroyed. We don't know how much has been converted into jewelry. We don't know how many ounces of gold are out in the mountains or the Grand Canyon. We don't know how much gold is under somebody's mattress or buried in their backyard. We have no idea. And when you when you have when you're comparing things to something, you need to have that common denominator be fixed. And gold is not fixed. We don't know how much is out there. And so it's very hard to value things against gold when you have no idea how much gold is actually out there. So that's the first one. <laughs> Look at this. Crypto Ethan says, I just had a one gold ad interrupt this stream. <laughs> There you go. So is there ads on the stream? I thought the live streams didn't have ads on them, only after. Anyways, another reason to be using Zap.Stream when I actually have enough sats in there to, to do it. So with that, that's the first one. How much gold is out there? We have no idea. So how do you value things against an asset where you actually don't know how much supply there is? How much is out there? And we don't know how much is going to come in the future either. That's the other part of this. So if gold for dem if demand for gold increases, you can always make more gold. You can always mine more gold. And so with Bitcoin, we know exactly how much there is today. And we know exactly how much there's going to be in four years from now, eight years from now, 12 years from now. We know that it's all programmed into the code. So when you have that, when something's predictable, you can value it a lot easier. When it's fixed, known, you can value it much easier. So like I said, if, if gold, the demand for gold increased by 100x tomorrow, let's say it went from 2000 bucks to 200,000 bucks per ounce, what would happen there? There'd be a bunch of people going out to the mountains. There'd be a bunch of new companies setting up, going out to the mountains to explore, to mine gold. So it would take a while, but eventually that supply would catch up to demand. There's a ton of gold out there. I saw this morning that there was a, a volcano in Antarctica that's shooting out 
uh, I think it was like 600 tons of, no, I forget what it was. And it was a crazy amount of gold that it was just spewing out of this volcano, gold dust. But people can't get there to Antarctica. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. So if the, if the demand of gold increased, they could keep up to it with the supply. That's just how it works. You just mine it. With, gold, with Bitcoin, if the demand for Bitcoin went from 60,000 to 600,000 tomorrow, there's nothing that we could do about it. We can't go out to the mountains. We can't print new Bitcoin. You can't create new Bitcoin. Nothing changes. You cannot, you cannot meet the demand with supply artificially. Or not artificially, but period. So that's number two. Number three is that gold is much easier to counterfeit. You can't fake Bitcoin. Try sending a Bitcoin transaction to an address that doesn't work. It just won't, it won't let you do it. So you can't counterfeit Bitcoin. You can't print Bitcoin. With gold, though, if you've been paying any sort of attention to the news in the last couple months, there's been a lot of gold found, discovered, that is completely fake. So I'm sure people, I mean, I don't have any gold myself, but if you look at a gold coin, you go, you buy it online or you buy it from the pawn shop. I don't know how people get gold anymore, <laughs> which is part of this whole thing. But would you be able to tell if it's real or fake just by holding it or looking at it? I mean, you could probably pay somebody to appraise it, but at that point, what are you going to do? And there's, you can shave gold, you can do different things to it. And that was a big part of our money too, why they put the little notches on the side is because people were faking it. It's easy to counterfeit gold and coins and money. You can't counterfeit Bitcoin. So that's number three. Number four is traveling with gold. So if you're in a country that, you know, take Canada as an example, you're in Canada, you're not overly impressed with your government. All of a sudden, the government starts getting very tyrannical, which we've seen here before. And let's say that you have $100,000 worth of gold in your basement. Somebody wants to leave Canada. What do you do with that gold? First of all, you need to find a buyer for it if you want to convert it to cash, which I think would be very challenging. Second part of that is if you wanted to pick it up and take it on the plane, do you think you're getting on that plane with $100,000 worth of gold in your suitcase? I don't think so. Or even if you needed to go somewhere, let's say your house is on fire. You need to take, uh, <laughs> I mean, the gold probably wouldn't burn, but you know what I mean? Like it's hard to pick up and leave with gold. With Bitcoin, very easy. You don't even need to have the device. All you need to have is 12 words. So if you are in that, if you're in a situation where you think that there's a chance that you're going to have to flee your country, and it sounds kind of crazy from Canada and the U.S. This isn't something that has typically happened before, but we're not the only people that live on Earth. There are there are people in countries where this is a legitimate concern every day. They might have to flee the country, and so if you can memorize twelve words, you can take your Bitcoin anywhere. You can destroy your device, memorize your twelve words hop on a plane, land, import those 12 words into a new device or a new wallet, and you have your Bitcoin. Pretty cool. <clears throat> yes, that's a great point from Brennan. So there's, there's two parts of this. He says, we don't know how much gold is in Fort Knox. So we don't know how much gold is in Fort Knox. They're telling you that and maybe we'll, I didn't even have this as one of them, but the ver the verify verifiability of it. So they're telling you that we have all this gold in Fort Knox. Has anybody audited that in the last 50 years? How much gold is actually there? So they're telling you that we have all this gold. They're, they're putting that on their balance sheet, but is it actually there? We have no idea. At the same time, they're saying that, but we also don't know. The part that we don't know is the issue there, that we don't know what the supply is. So how do you value anything against something that you don't know what the supply is? And people talk about, you know, maybe we'll go back to a gold standard where our currency is backed by gold. But you're still putting your trust in somebody to hold that gold. So let's say that you have $1,000 worth of gold and you get a little bank note or you get a deposit into your smartphone. How do you know that that gold's actually there? Are you going to have a live stream of your 
little wee part, your little gold bars in a safe somewhere. They're going to live stream that to you to verify that it's actually there. No, it's a nightmare. With Bitcoin, you just copy and paste your address into mempool.space and you can see how much Bitcoin's there, how much you have in your wallet at any time. So that's the next one. Impossible to travel with gold. Impossible to flee your country with gold. Try it. Try taking a couple ounces even. Never mind 100,000. Try taking a couple ounces of gold on a plane. Next one here. Gold is confiscatable. It's happened before. It literally happened less than 100 years ago where the government went door to door. They put out advertisements saying, if you have any gold, it's ours now. We need this. We're going into a second war here. We need all the gold. So you're handed over. They can't do that with Bitcoin. They can come to your house. They can say, hey, it looks like back in 2024, you bought some Bitcoin off of bull Bitcoin. So hand over your Bitcoin. And what do you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I bought it, but I locked myself out of my wallet. It's gone. What do they do? What could they possibly do in that, in that situation? They could go through your whole house. They could find a private key with gold, with Bitcoin on it. But if we get to that stage, you're probably going to want to memorize your 12 words and not having it lying around your house, right? If you hear, if you hear rumors of the government going door to door, asking for people's Bitcoin, you're probably going to get rid of your devices. You're probably going to get rid of your backup phrases and you're going to memorize your 12 words. And when they do that, even if they killed you, they still can't get your Bitcoin. So like I said, they can accuse you of having Bitcoin, but there's absolutely no way for them to actually get it from you and find it and prove that you have that. If you have it memorized in your those 12 words in your head, there's absolutely nothing that they can do about it. And that's a problem for them. So, and I mean, people are worried about the, I forget what the executive order is of people confiscating Bitcoin, but you have to, you have to think about the other part of that is that if you do have Bitcoin in an ETF, or you have Bitcoin on an exchange, that's a whole different story. And that's probably what they would actually go after. They won't be going door to door because like I said, it's a waste of time. But if they go after the ETFs, it's attached to your name. They can just pluck that. If they go after the exchanges, it's attached to your name. They can just pluck that. No problem. It's easy to do. And I'm sure it will happen. But if you have it done, if you do it right, if you have it in cold storage, or even better in your head, it's impossible for them to confiscate. Okay, CFL ad, that's interesting. <laughs> Michael Abbott says in the 1500s, Spain's explorers brought back literal boatloads of gold from the new world and destroyed their economy by diluting the market. Exactly, exactly. And that's something that could happen with gold and cannot happen with Bitcoin. Bren says, don't go prospecting in Antarctica. Yeah, you. <laughs> he says there's bears in cold weather, but I think you might get shot down before you get to the bears in the snow if you're going to Antarctica. <clears throat> Crypto Eden says, unlike gold, half the supply of Bitcoin in the world isn't being used by pure vanity jewelry. That's one of the main arguments for gold is that you can actually do something with it. You can make jewelry with it. Nice. <laughs> Adrian Lee, officially, only gold samples have been removed since the facility was last audited in 1953. This is Fort Knox. There have, though, been many rumors that the vaults have been depleted or even or may even be empty. So two parts of that, they're telling you that they have gold. We don't know if they do or not. We can't verify it. And we don't know if they have it or not. So we don't know what the supply is. So how do you measure something? How do you value something against an asset like gold when we have no idea how much supply there is? And that's kind of the overlying theme here with Bitcoin is that everything will fall in comparison to Bitcoin because it's a scarce asset with fixed supply. Everything forever will fall in comparison to Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin isn't going up. Everything's just falling in comparison to Bitcoin, even gold. 
Jose says we need to go knock and go knocking at Fort Knox. I think Fort Knox would be like a, a sliver of what's in the Grand Canyon. If you look at the history of the Grand Canyon and how blocked off it is by government and parks, that, that's one of the sneaky things. And I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this on YouTube. But one of the sneaky things about like national parks, and they put all this money into funding it so people can go visit there, they block off a lot of mountains and Grand Canyons and stuff like that. Would they nationalize them? So they protect it. It's theirs now. And a lot of that is because there's valuable stuff on that land, like gold. <clears throat> Crypto Ethan says, I don't have any Bitcoin. It's all on the blockchain. True. You just have the keys to it. And there's really no way that they can prove that. So that's uh, the next one. That's number five. Gold is confiscatable. Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. Number six here. Gold is not divisible. So one of the main arguments that people have who are very uneducated on Bitcoin is they say, well, I can't pay for coffee with Bitcoin. Well, you can. We just watched a farmer's market in El Salvador of people buying things and selling things with Bitcoin, with Lightning. You're not going to use layer one to pay for a coffee. Layer one is going to be the settlement layer of the world for trade, global trade. But you can use the Lightning Network to pay for coffee. So that's one. But... Think about trying to pay for a coffee with an ounce of gold. So what's gold worth now? Like 2,200 bucks, 2,300 bucks. You go to the coffee store and you try paying for something worth adult, worth five bucks. What do you do? Are you going to shave it off in front of the clerk? Hopefully they have a nice weighing scale there. And everybody behind you doesn't mind that you're shaving off a small sliver of your gold to pay for a coffee. So it's not divisible. Bitcoin, on the other hand, even though people say, well, there's not enough Bitcoin in the world, we need to increase the supply. You can move the decimal places as many times as you want in Bitcoin. And we're going to see that play out in the next couple of decades here. We're going to see it move from Bitcoin to SATs, to microSATs, to micro microSATs. It's highly divisible. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter that you can keep increasing the amount of it. You're just changing the unit of measure. But the key there is that it's a fixed supply. So even if you move the decimal place by five, you still have a fixed supply. You're just changing how you value it. And the reason why we're not valuing or we're not talking in microsats yet is because Bitcoin isn't valuable enough for people to measure it in microsats yet. Yet. And if you look at the ETFs, they actually say, it says the amount of sats and then it has a decimal point after that, which to me means that we're already living in a microsat world. We're just not really aware of it yet. So gold is not divisible. You can't pay for coffee with gold. You can't pay for groceries with gold. You can't pay for gas with gold. You can't pay for anything with gold. Even a house. Would you take like a bag of gold and try to buy a house with it? <laughs> I mean, you could. I just don't think you'd find somebody who's willing to take gold for a house, but you could easily buy a house with Bitcoin easily without any lawyers, without any banks. So there you go. That's number six. Um, number seven here is the carrying costs of gold. If, if you are somebody, think about the amount of people out there who have like a hundred Bitcoin worth millions of dollars. If you had the equivalent of that in gold, you either have to have like a whole fortress around your house or you have to pay somebody to hold that gold, to store that gold for you. So you're putting your, your life, a lot of life energy, you're putting trust in somebody else to hold that for you. And it also has a cost. So gold has gone up historically somewhat over the last 50 years. But when you factor in like the carrying cost of it, paying somebody to store that gold for you, it takes, it cuts into your profits there. So Bitcoin doesn't have any carrying costs. You could buy a device or you could just set up a wallet on your computer, send all your Bitcoin to that, destroy the wallet, memorize your 12 words. You don't have any carrying costs there.
Uh, I think I, I missed one here. I, I said one twice. But anyways, this is the last one here. Programmable. Gold's not programmable. Bitcoin is. And we're moving into this high-tech world here where everybody uses the internet every day. There's more people with cell phones and smartphones than there is people with clean drinking water. So everybody's on the internet now. Everybody's connected. And you need to have a, a program. I mean, that's another one that I missed off of here. You can't send gold to, for, to pay for something online. If I wanted to buy something in El Salvador, I can send Bitcoin easily for pretty much nothing using lightning. Try sending gold for something in El Salvador. So that's one part of it. But the programmable part, programmable part of that is that, you know, in the future, when we're doing jobs, I think that the whole landscape of jobs is going to look much different in the future. Nobody's going to be working a nine to five job anymore, but we're still going to take some time to get there. So with programmable money, you you sign up for a job or you tell somebody you're going to do a job and you can actually work it into a contract where you get paid over time. So let's say you have a contract for one Bitcoin to do all this work and you can program it in a way where it pays you every day or every hour, whatever it is. You can program that with Bitcoin. You can't do that with gold. You can't send gold. You can't do anything with that. It's, it's a pet rock. It's It worked hundreds of thousands of years ago, but we're in a much different world now. And I think the, the only people who are having a hard time understanding that is the people who have been in gold for their life. And the worst thing is, is that people who like gold, who own gold, actually share a lot of the same beliefs as people who own Bitcoin. They're, they just go about it in a much different way, a very stubborn way, because they, they've put so much of their life learning about gold and how much better it is than money, why our, our currency, our fiat currency sucks. But they're, they're stuck in that way, and they're going to they're gonna pay for that in a big way, I think, in the future. So that's what I had. I do want to zip through these Noster posts as well. <clears throat> because there was some good stuff on there. We need to build our own Fort Nakamoto. <laughs> Chisler, yes, exactly. That's where the term Chisler comes from. If you're chiseling your gold to pay for things or shaving it off to make yourself, uh, you know, shave some off and keep the value of it, essentially. Crypto Ethan says, George Gammon just did a little experiment across South America. I forget what country and exactly what he bought with gold, but they only gave him half the market value. Yes. It's high, it's highly manipulated by the banks. And it's just, it's, it's trouble. Jose says, gold's limitation and ultimate failure was the dollar. And without gold, the dollar never would have existed in the first place. The dollar went from the gold standard back to back by debt. Okay, let's, uh, let's zip through these comments here because there was a lot. So I'm just going to read these. This is a, a cool thing about Noster. And this is part of what I'm going to talk about in the second part of today's show. But I asked the question on Noster today. Why is Bitcoin better than gold? I said every correct answer in the next 40 minutes before the show. We'll get a little Monday morning zap. Hashtag ask Noster. So here's what I got in the last hour. <laughs> so I'm going to have to pay some sats for this, but that's okay. Devo says thieves stole king touch gold but they can never steal as Bitcoin. So unconfiscatable. Lethal Lee says, easier to transport. Traveling with gold is tough. Alex says, 12 words lets me bring my Bitcoin anywhere in the world. Gold gets seized at the border. Yep. Stack and Beats. It's <laughs> a good name. Cap Supply, Exact Supply, is known counterfeit proof we're talking about bitcoin here counterfeit proof weightless instantly able to travel across the globe cannot be stopped evil people don't like it it stops wars instead of causing them d allen young i did de i determine how and where it's spent not my government owen says i don't have to stick bitcoin up my arse <laughs> to get it over the border 
Steed. It's trivial. It's trivial to verify if it's real. Yes, you can copy and paste. Look at the blockchain. Zordon. Spending it doesn't require a price negotiation and a fair weighted scale. Correct. Corn Dalior, Corn Bitcoin can be mined anywhere there is energy in the world. Gold can only be mined where there is gold. Wow, that's a good one. I might get a bigger zap than the other ones. So Bitcoin can be mined anywhere there is energy in the world. So think about that. We, I mean, we talk about the natural resources of the world and how we've been unable to utilize them in the past until Bitcoin. So you can actually hook up a Bitcoin miner to a waterfall, a volcano, wind, solar, hydro, anything. Anywhere there's natural resources, you can hook up a Bitcoin miner and convert that natural energy directly into money, Bitcoin. With gold, you can only mine where there is gold. And the other part of that too is with the natural resources, it, it doesn't matter how much there is. It's not going to change the supply of Bitcoin. It's just going to change the hash rate of Bitcoin. Banjo, this is a good one. Said you can't zap with gold. True. Try zapping somebody with gold. Uh, Malos10 says, you can pay with Bitcoin really fast in any part of the world. It is secure and finite. John Nevin says it can be stored in the brain. Gold can't. Baker, far more easy, far more easy to tra transact with Bitcoin, easier to travel with. Also, Bitcoin is now more rare than gold. Yes. Bitcoin is now more rare than gold. The inflation rate is lower than gold. Daniel says. The people who like it are more fun. <laughs> uh, this one, I just says the end pub. I can't see the name. You don't need a shovel to mine it. Nick says the proof of work difficulty adjustment, the coded scarcity and the immutable public ledger. Okay, three more here. Justin says absolute scarcity. Uh, Black Smith, blacksmith says you can tattoo your seed phrase but you but gold must fit in your butt <laughs> i think you'd be kind of dumb to tattoo your seed phrase onto you but fair point and the last one here jordan Eskovich. it's saleable across both time and space absolute scarcity authentic uh, authenticity is easily verified and unforgeable instant to near instant settlement you can't zap gold and Peter Schiff is in disbelief. So there you go. Thank you, Noster, for that. Confirmed what I talked about here for an hour. People get it. People get it. Okay, so let's... Uh, we're 56 minutes in. This went longer than I thought it was going to. But here's what I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to say. This is what I was kind of waiting the whole show to say. Uh, Dan says, I've yet to see an overpaid celebrity wearing Bitcoin grills. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move over to living in the future right now. I'm going to, we just hear, we just heard why Bitcoin is far superior to gold. Gold has a $12 trillion market cap. Bitcoin has a $1 trillion market cap. People will eventually catch on to this, why, why Bitcoin is so much better than gold. And when that happens, as Bitcoin passes gold for market cap, the price goes up. Everything changes. Everything in our life is going to change. And what we can be doing right now is preparing for that. I'm sure most people aren't going out and buying gold or even thinking about it. That wasn't the point of today's show. The point is, is how valuable Bitcoin is going to be once everybody else figures this out. Because I dare you to find me a person to listen to these arguments and try to tell me that gold is a better investment than Bitcoin right now. The only thing that they'll say is that you can make jewelry with gold or that gold has a longer history. It has a proven track record. 
but Bitcoin's only 15 years old. So that's, I mean, if that's your only real pro for gold, then you're in some trouble. So what's going to happen here is Bitcoin is going to go up forever. So what we, we need to be doing today is we need to be figuring out how we can earn as much Bitcoin as possible. And so we've started doing this thing. It's called living in the future. We focus on becoming better Bitcoiners, earning Bitcoin and building businesses in Bitcoin and the network aspect of it. So what, what I'm going to do today is we're cutting off the first tier here. This is going to be the last day that you're going to be able to sign up for living in the future and get access to the group chat, which I, I believe is pretty valuable, worth way more than the, the monthly membership cost. So we're going to cut off the group chat today, regardless of how many people are in there. I want to cap it at 44. We have 42 right now. So I'm not going to be watching it all day trying to tell people they can or can't join. But at the end of tonight, even if we don't get any new members, we're cutting off the living in the future, the visionary tier. So we're still going to keep doing these shows every week. You're still going to be able to sign up for the shows, but we're going to cut off the group chat because I just don't want it to be too noisy in there. I don't want to be too chaotic. So regardless of how many people sign up for it today and join, we're cutting it off. <clears throat> and I think you're going to want to watch this today. I think this is going to be one of the best shows I've done on the regular and the Patreon. I'm going to be talking about opportunities in Bitcoin. And I got about five different things here, not so much just business ideas, but like things you can be doing right now and things you can be implementing into your day to day to earn more Bitcoin. And just different ways to think about things in the future. Because if, if you build things now, if you set these things up right now, when that time comes, you're going to be very well situated. So I got five or six things here I'm going to share today. Opportunities in Bitcoin. So if you are somebody who's you know wanting to do more than just buy and hold Bitcoin, you want to get involved with this massive transition from the fiat to the Bitcoin, then join for today's show, for the group chat, and for future. You can just sign up for a free day, a free seven day trial. There hasn't been, I think there's been one person who's gone through it and canceled their membership after it. So we have 42 people in there. I hope that you join us today. If you do want to join in the description, you can find everything you need to know about the show, about me, but you can also sign up for the living in the future tier. It's like the second or third thing down there. Jump over there. And we're going to be talking about the opportunities in Bitcoin right now. And some of them are going to tie into what we talked about today. And I th I'm very excited. There's there's one strategy that I think most people are sleeping on right now. I haven't, I haven't heard anybody else on the internet talking about this yet. So join us. If you don't, I understand, but I've very much encourage you to do it. If you're somebody who wants to be serious about this stuff and start earning Bitcoin, I highly suggest you check it out. And don't forget, smash the like on your way out or on the way to the living in the future. Smash the like. Thank you, Rick. Johnny says you can put Bitcoin up your ass if you have a ledger, but that's all ledger is good for. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a Bitcoiner or like a crypto guy, I think. He tried shoving a ledger up his butt when he was going to prison. But like, you don't need the ledger. You don't need to have a device there. You can just memorize the 12 words. I don't know if he missed that part about Bitcoin or not. <laughs> but anyways, that's it. Check out Living in the Future. I think that if you, you know, you watch today's show, you can go back and watch the other shows we've been doing for the last couple months. There's so much good information in there. So with that, I hope you have a great Monday. I appreciate you all for being here. I hope that you join us over on Living in the Future. We're cutting it off today, the visionary tier. The group chat's going to be cut off today. And I think that there's a lot of value that's accruing in there. And is the things that are going to be built in the, within that group is incredible. So have a great Monday. Be calm. Be cheerful. I appreciate you. John says, how can I join the group chat? Very easy. Go to, in the description, everything you need is under there. Click Living in the Future, sign up for the tier, and then I'll shoot you an email right after the, the show today, and we'll get you in there.
Very easy. So be calm, be cheerful, have a great Monday, and hopefully we'll see you over on Living in the Future. Bye-bye.